Good evening from Raleigh, North Carolina, and welcome to another Tropical Update video. Today is Sunday, September the 9th, 2018, and the current time is approximately 9.20 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Remember to make all decisions solely based upon National Hurricane Center forecast and only look to your local National Weather Service offices for timely and accurate information regarding Hurricane Florence in the coming days. So overnight, last night, and through the day today, Florence has intensified into a Category 1 hurricane. You can clearly tell by the swirl on the map. Uh, this, you know, the typical tropical look here is Hurricane Florence. We have Tropical Storm Isaac down here, and we have Hurricane Helene, which was designated a hurricane earlier this afternoon. We also have a disturbance that we're watching in the Western Caribbean that has a, a very small chance, but a chance nonetheless, to become a tropical disturbance as it moves over the Yucatan Peninsula into the Western Gulf of Mexico. Something could form with that, but the immediate threat is obviously Florence as it continues to move westward and continue on its path its projected path um, into the southeast coast of the United States, which um, is becoming more concerning by the day with a large, potent, and powerful hurricane making way toward a, a U.S. landfall. So I want to zoom in here on uh, Hurricane Florence. I won't be talking about Isaac or Helene in this video just because the main primary threat is uh, Hurricane Florence. When um, time warrants in the coming days in the videos, I might speak a little bit more to Isaac as it um, approaches the Lesser Antilles, but Helene is expected to curve back out to sea. Um, with that being said, though, I want to focus on Hurricane Florence, and here is a uh, thermal, not a thermal, a uh, long wave satellite, uh, long wave infrared satellite imagery from the GOES East satellite that was launched a couple of years ago. You can see it's really tightened up, a good, very well ventilated storm right now. It is battling a little bit of shear, but it doesn't seem to be having issues with that. You can see the, um, the rotation out here from the outer bands, the upper level Cirrus, and you can see these very cold cloud tops. So on the scale here, this is looking at brightness temperature and the darker these colors are it's a little counterintuitive the darker the colors the colder the cloud tops the colder the cloud tops the higher the thunderstorm tops and the higher the thunderstorm tops the stronger the storm so that's kind of the flow map you can use to, to look through that and see how strong um, you know the central thunderstorms are so in this area you know we have a very, very big area of convection i guess red is not the right uh, color to use in this situation switch over to a, a blue um, this is the area you know of the strongest convection right now and this will probably wrap as it uh, wrap around the, the center of circulation as it develops an eye tomorrow as florence is expected to become a major hurricane uh, during the course of the day tomorrow and undergo a period of rapid intensification which I'll also reference on the next image I'm going to show you here. But rapid intensification is an actual term used by the National Hurricane Center to describe a storm that intensifies by 35 miles per hour within 24 um, hours. So that is rapid intensification, and Florence is expected to undergo that as we go through the day tomorrow, and it's really going to swell into a very uh, dangerous storm as there's nothing really in its way. I've showed you the plots of the past couple of nights. It's going into an area of very warm, untapped um, water, and, and you know the southwestern Atlantic, I guess you could say, um, as it continues on that, that track, it's going to encounter some very warm and very deep and warm water, which will allow it to kind of, uh, you know, intensify and really, really and kind of swell up into a very dangerous storm. There's nothing in its way to hinder it. So that is where it's likely headed. Um, this is a, a neat loop that it shows one minute data and it's on tropicaltidbits.com. It's good to, to watch to see how the storm develops and it updates every um, couple of minutes. So you can kind of get a live look per se at what's happening with Florence, but you can definitely tell that it's getting this act together. No defined eyeball feature yet, but likely when we wake up tomorrow morning, uh, Florence will look like a much different and much healthier and uh, quite a scary looking storm um, as it continues to roll westward and um, approach the southeastern United States. So looking at the official Hurricane Center uh, forecast, this is the National Hurricane Center page, nhc.noaa.gov. I'll post all these links in the video description as well. Um, this is that area of interest we talked about. Here's Isaac and Helene, but the main focus of this video is going to be Florence. You can see the information there. Currently a Category 1 hurricane with 85 mile per hour sustained winds, a minimal central pressure uh, quite low at 975, and moving west at a, a pretty slow pace of 7 miles per hour compared to what it was moving. Or if you remember Gordon uh, last week, it was moving rather quickly. Uh, Florence is really slowing down, which unfortunately gives it more time to tap into that warm water and uh, intensify. Here's the official National Hurricane Center forecast cone. Uh, the main thing you'll probably notice with this, it's not a rounded cone anymore. They have cut this down here to kind of, I, I believe that's to indicate, you know, the, the better agreement with the um, a lot of forecast models and guidance and just the overall synoptic pattern support Florence following this path directly almost and um, coming right in here. But I think they've trimmed this down to show that, hey, this, you know, this is the area in here that we want to watch. And then a little bit more of a round area um, as things are a little more unclear what it will do when it does reach land, but uh, confidence is growing that it is going to make a U.S. impact in the Carolinas. And uh, one key thing to remember is that this graphic does not show 
the imp is not an impact graph because it's just showing where the center of circulation could be, which means the center of Florence could end up over here, it could end up over here, and this impact or this graphic does not show the impact of the periphery of the storm, which could be you know this large or this large, depending on where the the eye of the center of the storm actually does land, depends on you know how how far inland the impacts are felt. But this graphic is just showing the projected path to the center of the storm. So this is the you know the official forecast graphic and i wanted to show you there's a lot of there's a whole suite of tools i went over some of them last night and i'll post them on the pages there's just too much to cram into you know a quick video i want to split this video up halfway with uh, florence information and then the flooding information um, that, that i posted on that graphic on my facebook page but i wanted to quickly go to here and discussion and just show there's a lot of text you can read here that comes straight from the forecasters this is a pretty um th this page per the, the discussion at least is a very kind of clear um they put it in layman's terms the best they can to kind of uh, convey you know information to you know, all of our publics and all of our, you know general audience that can understand it and here's a little kind of a matrix a table um, showing the forecast positions and max winds and the thing that is quite concerning is here is you know the um the rapid intensification period so it's expected to gain you know 15 so that is 35 miles per hour so that um you know from right now this here would classify as rapid intensification and then if you know goodness forbid it does grow anymore it would also uh, possibly have another rapid intensification period after that. So we're looking at a very dangerous storm, possibly reaching 150 mile per hour sustained winds, which is just shy of category five classification um, within three days. And uh, the main impact of this, I'm going to jump that graphic. I don't mean to be too jumpy on the graphics, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of information to go through. And um, you know, with the main impact being this graphic is what I wanted to show right here. Yeah. Um, the earliest reasonable arrival times, you know, with the main impact of the storm being, you know, Wednesday evening and um, into Thursday afternoon at the earliest possible time for impacts starting to, to come from Florence. So um, certainly becoming a more imminent danger and more imminent threat as confidence increases and, and the, you know, the path kind of narrows for Florence to, to make any escape out to sea or slightly up the coast here. That scenario is, is quickly kind of fading away and a Carolinas, possibly northern Georgia and possibly extreme southeastern Virginia impact is looking likely, but the bullseye seems to be on the Carolinas at this time. So a quick summary, I want to transition from the Florence meteorology and dynamics into more of a flooding risk as I wanted to kind of have a focus on that video, on this video tonight. And um, so this is just a quick slide I threw together in, um, in uh, what am I trying to say, in um, the Google Slides. I couldn't think of what it was called. Um, it's just kind of like PowerPoint online, but uh, Hurricane Florence Information and Impact, you know, a state of emergency has been declared for North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. That's really just a state of preparedness. It doesn't mean anything other than that. It allows to kind of free up some resources, especially for agribusiness and agriculture in North Carolina. You know, it's one of, it is, I don't think it is one of, it is our biggest um, contribution to our, our state's economy, uh, generating over you know, $80 billion annually. Uh, the state of emergency kind of frees up resources for them to kind of harvest any crops. You know, it's better to harvest some crops and move inland than to lose an entire, you know, stand of corn or an entire thing. Uh, with the potential for flooding from Florence. So that kind of frees up resources there. And then also transportation issues, if that becomes something that uh, develops down the road with evacuations, it just frees up resources for that. Uh, there is, I saw today, a voluntary evacuation order for UNC Wilmington. Um, that's a college down in the city of Wilmington, for those of you who may not be familiar. So um, already we're starting to see the word evacuation pop up and that will become more and more likely in the coming days as confidence grows for a Southeastern US impact. And uh, third bullet, I've just put things on here that I was kind of certain of. Um, there's not really much more we can be certain of in terms of direct impacts, but the Carolinas are set to see you know, the strongest tropical cyclone, or at least the strongest tropical cyclone threat we have seen in years. Uh, Hurricane Matthew never actually made direct landfall in North Carolina, but that was a significant storm. But this uh, this would be a whole other level in terms of the you know kind of the two threat of the winds, the storm surge, and the rain. I guess that's a three threat. That's not a two threat, but a very significant storm. And we seem to be right in the, in the bullseye and the target for the storm. So uh, continuing with the flooding information, there are a couple of tools I'm going to show you here that I'll also post that kind of show um, storm surge. And I'm going to actually take the legend off before I show you because I don't want you to focus on the legend and the actual heights. I just want to show you the aerial impacts, the aerial, A-R-E-A-L, um, the, you know, the, the area-based impacts of the storm, not necessarily the magnitude at this point, but to get a better idea. So here's the track. You can see the dates and the timestamps as it goes forward here. Keep in mind it's showing military time, so 1500 hours would be 3 p.m. And if we go in here, this is showing in the storm surge, and I just told you I took the legend off, so don't focus on the amounts. But you know, if if the eye, if the center of the circulation does follow the storm, the right front quadrant of the storm is going to be the most severe. So 
This is a large chunk of real estate that is very populated on Riceville Beach, Curie Beach, Carolina Beach, Surf City, Emerald Isle, you know, the Crystal Coast. I think it's actually down here. I'm not misspoking, uh, mis, misspeaking there. Um, you know, Top Sail Island, Jacksonville, Cape Lookout, um, over, you know, Camp Lejeune um, up here. And, you know, there's just, there's a lot, a lot of real estate that would be impacted by the surge. And if the storm pans out as is forecasted to do, this would be a huge concern for these areas as these barrier islands um, because, you know, th their barrier islands are just that. They don't have a substantially no amount of land. And that's likely where we're, where we're likely to see our evacuations and things could get very bad if this projected scenario does pan out. The worst of the surge would be on the right side of the storm. And Florence is expected to kind of swell in size, which would also not be very good um, for that. So I'm going to, I'll write out some more details about this graphic and kind of share it as it changes on. But I wanted to kind of show you that. Um, I'll come back to that graphic. This is a flood risk information system map. So this is just showing, this is not showing what's forecasted to happen. This is not what's going to happen, but it's showing the most likely kind of occurrences based on past storms. So this is showing, I, I believe this is 100 year flood plan. I need to do some more digging on here, but it's showing you what's likely to happen in some of our bigger rivers. So you have the Cape Fear River here, the Noose River here, the Tar River here, the Roanoke River. Um, Chowan River and then Pasco Tank up here and then this is obviously the Pamlico and Albemarle Sound with a lot of overwash and flooding in these coastal communities where there's a lot of wildlife refuges. Lumber River is also down here. Didn't want to leave that out. But this is just kind of showing what would be likely to happen and to, to corroborate this and to, to support this. These were actual images taken after um, Hurricane Floyd in 1999. You can see the timestamp for July 30, 1999 and then after Floyd hit in September 30, 1999. Uh, you know, here are your points of reference. These letters are in the same places on both images. You can see the river swelling and it should look familiar because you just saw the slide where it kind of pointed out, you know, here's the Tar River swelling, here's the Noose River swelling. Down here in Brunswick and, and Lumberton, uh, Robinson County, I should say, in Lumberton down here, the Lumber River, um, you know, that's, this is actual, this actually happened with, you know, very torrential rains and flooding with Hurricane Floyd. This would also be a huge rainmaker. So that's something not out of the question. And I just wanted to show you this. This is a great map to go and look if you're in a flood prone area. If you're unfamiliar, you can type in your address or, you know, click here. You know, let's say you live in New Bern, for example, and you live up here, you know, somewhere in here, you can click and kind of find your location and click on flood information. And it will show you, um, you know, detailed information. But the main point of me showing you this was that you can check if you're in a flood zone. If you don't know, you need to check and, you know, I, I live in Clayton up here, so I know I'm not in a flood zone because I've checked. But there are people who may live in a flood zone and may not even know it because, you know, maybe they didn't live here during Hurricane Matthew. Maybe Matthew didn't affect them as much. But it's always good to know regardless if a storm is coming towards you or not, whether you're in a flood zone or not. So I might jump back to that graphic um, as I'm wrapping up. But these are the river basins in North Carolina. So all, you know, if any rain falls in this green zone, it's going to drain into the Noose River. Um, the Noose River Basin, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm telling you incorrectly, this is the Cape Fear River Basin, this is the Noose River Basin in this kind of peachy tan color. Any rain that falls within this river basin will drain into the Noose River, causing it to swell. Well, the big problem with uh, tropical systems coming from this angle is that they're pushing water from the ocean in this direction along the coast, which eventually gets fed, you know, especially down here in Wilmington with the Cape Fear, uh, Cape Fear River, water is getting pushed upstream, and then you also have uh, rain running down into this, that's a bad arrow, uh, draining into the stream, and then that wants to flow downstream over the coming days. So you get this kind of jam of water and can get some very bad flooding impacts um, in those areas. So that's the problem we have here in North Carolina with the barrier islands. Water kind of gets trapped and pushed inland, and then you have fresh water flooding. So, you know, that's, that's how a flooding disaster unfolds, and we're hoping not for that. But as we look at the precipitation forecast, this is at least uh, released today, uh, there is a bullseye in central North Carolina of about 10 inches of rain. That's not a scare tactic. That's not there to scare you. That's just showing that if this storm does proceed as projected and come inland and kind of stall, there's going to be a lot of problems with, with flooding. And uh, the wind threat's also going to be very, very high at the um, at the, the beach and the coast, but flooding is going to be a huge issue too. And well inland, there will be impacts. Uh, this is not just you know confined to the coast. So I'm running low on time. So I wanted to, I guess I'll jump back to maybe um, this map and just kind of show you, you know, it's expected to make landfalls a category four. So any of these areas would be subject to, you know, a nine foot storm surge. Um, you know, there's no official storm surge forecast put out by the National Hurricane Center at this time, but that's just kind of the impacts. This would be a major storm and it would have major impacts. So um, I'm running low on time here, so I'll wrap up here and I'll continue this video a little bit tomorrow. But the main thing is just to review your resources, see if you're in a flood prone zone and, uh, you know, get that information now so that you don't have to do that um, when crunch time comes later this week. Um, until then, stay safe and I'll see you on the next video.